Yo, uh, JT here, hanging out, um, working on a project right now, uh, Harley Davidson, uh, transmission, clutch, cover, call it a slave cylinder. Um, basically, uh, I'm doing a custom tool path right now for, um, for a, a, a ring clip that's in it. Um, Harley has like a custom ring clip that holds the whole uh, mechanical assembly inside of it. And um, it's kind of a pain sometimes when you don't know how to do the tool path, so I figured I'd make a quick YouTube video um, showing how it's done. Uh, this is my custom cutter that I I ground down this morning. So bring it in here, show you. So nothing too crazy. Um, so what it is is the the cutter needs to do a, like a sweeping path all the way around down in here, and uh, just need to drop it down in. So, one of the easy ways to do it, um, pardon my broken screen here, so this is the part we're looking at right there. Um, so I'm going to add a new, a new operation, I'm um, going to go down to 2D milling and go to 2D contour, wait for that to come up. And uh, I can I can show you the uh, you can see the the little clip down in there. So that's what we're that's what we're basically trying to get down to. So um, go to my library, and I've already saved the like the slotting um, cutter my, with my geometry and all that in it. Um, saved that already just to speed it up. Um, so select that. There it is, right there. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the model here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna basically choose and turn off a few of the things here, just make it a little easier, because um, we know we know that it's basically one chain all the way around. So you can see uh, I'm gonna select all the way down into the into the deep corner of it there and just double check that it selects the whole chain all the way around all the way to the end so there we go got that and then this is one thing that I like to do right here uh, this is basically just the lead in so I want to change it I'm gonna probably give it like um, I'm gonna give it uh, probably give it like a quarter inch just to and what that does that's just gonna lead in and lead out um, everything else is pretty much the same don't really need too much stuff uh, so then I go to my um, go to my levels, and I like to do this for a lot of my operations. I just go to a selection, and I go back to my model, and I actually just go and I select, I select this plane, and that's the bottom. That's right down here. That's the bottom of the cut. Basically, tells the computer that this is the lowest that you want it to ever go. Um, go back over. Um, and uh, I want to select, um, I'm going to do probably conventional on it, just sometimes they can get a little confused which side to be cutting on. Um, and I don't need to leave to stock, cutters all, the width is exactly right on the money. So um, yeah, I think we can, we can change up any of the other stuff if we really need to, bleed in and all that. We should be all good. Let's just see if it generates toolpath all right. So there we go, um, and looks pretty good. Looks like it's out on the right side. Um, <clears throat> let's go up to uh, we'll go up to the top up here, as you can tell by the sweet screen. I accidentally dropped it. My bad. <laughs> and uh, let's just do a, a simulate just to make sure everything's cool. So we'll rotate rotate this around just to make sure, and uh, I'm gonna. Started out slow here. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit, make it a little easier. So what we're looking for is just to make sure that lead in is correct, and then the lead out. There we go, all the way back up. Everything's cool. So um, I'm going to load up the cutter and we'll give it a try. See how it goes. Cool. Okay, so I got the um, I got the tool path in there um, as we were 
So we load it up. Um, one cool thing that I always like to do, just kind of a good good thing to always double check, is just to make sure that your tool heights are all set correct. I mean, the last thing we want to do is have it drop down and be the cutter offset off, you know, in depth or something and scrap this whole part. So um, what I do, um, you can do this in SolidWorks or, you know, Inventor or whatever program you're using with HSM. Um, but just, um, just double check, I mean, it only takes a second. So I do, um, I'll do a, a, a cutaway sectional view, uh, make sure your planes are right, and then select this cool thing about HSM. Um, is the fact that your toolpath still exists when you do like a cutaway and so what we do know is that this blue line that's our cutter line um, and you know the red is the plunge the green is the lead-in uh, so what we want to make sure is that the cut line um, is actually like in the same same plane as the bottom of of our cut um, if it's not then we're we're going to be making some scrap parts, so um, it's also a good time just to double check everything and make sure you didn't miss any operations or radiuses or chamfers or anything. So it's just kind of cool to do a cross section of everything too, just to make sure. So everything looks pretty good there. Um, next thing you do, real quick, um, since I did all the tool pass already except for this groove, um, what I can do is I can just basically um, right click it and uh, I can drag down and just go to um, post, right? And as if this one is the only one that's selected, one of the cool parts about it is when I go to my post, right, and I have all my information set, when it comes up in my HSM, um, I already posted already, sorry. <laughs> but um, but yeah, the cool part about it is like, you know, when it comes up in our, our post editor, uh, the, the neat part about it is this is only that slotting tool because that's the only one we selected because we didn't post all the operations so basically when I bring it into the machine the coolest part about it is I'm only going to be doing that operation in, as opposed to trying to find this slotting operation in like probably 30,000 lines of code if if it's a long program or you know 250,000 lines or or whatever you know how how complex your you know machining is so that's one of the cool parts it's as simple as just basically like you know finding our part and selecting selecting just the exact you know operation that we need it to do it just saves a ton of time and and also like you know for second op work or whatever we can come back through uh, so I think we're pretty much ready to go. I'm going to go back to the Centroid controller here. Um, everything's all loaded up, so uh, I haven't even run it yet. So this this could be scary, could not be. I don't know. There's only one way to find out, so um, we're all good there. Let's load this up. So we're doing a... This is a conventional cutting. Um, and, and one thing to always make sure of is, you know, when doing these slotting operations, that you don't uh, that you don't stop it midway. And if you do stop it midway for an op stop or or something in in the line, that you stop it and then you have to jog it out because otherwise it's going to want to lift straight up and break your tool off and probably wreck your groove. So I'm gonna take my time, real slow, no rush. I'm going to put some mist on it. I feel pretty good about the tool pass that HSM generates, so I'm not as concerned about like it coming up with any crazy lines of code that you know are going to throw me off. So I'm okay with showing it on my first pass. So. Uh, my RPM's about 1,000. Keep it pretty low, prevent a lot of chatter. Just don't want it to get out of control. A lot of, a lot of people like to run these things super fast or super slow. Kind of find a medium speed. It's basically a miniature cold saw right now, so.
And this whole setup, uh, this is a Centroid um, setup on a Bridgeport Boss 10. Um, put new encoders in it and just upgraded it. It's my prototype machine. i kind of fallen in love with it, so. <laughs> it's, uh, it's so easy to just do work on it, so. Keeping the speed really low is critical too, because you know we we have a pretty small little mech on that on that cutter in order to to be able to get the depth and everything. And it was just plus it was kind of it was already ground down from a previous job, so it's kind of uh, you know it it was it's the perfect tool to use to give get the right the right size. So as it gets to the end of the cut, what we're looking for too is that that lead in and lead out. Just that was that thing we added in uh, there when we were doing the programming. They're looking pretty good. We got plenty of clearance on it, and the, the Z is starting to come up. We'll shut down the coolant. There we go. All the way to home. Cool. I think we're pretty good. Um, we can take a look at it. I don't want to blow air because it's probably pretty loud, but um, that was the last stop on this side, and just got to tap some holes and then flip it around and do the second side. Uh, I hope that helped. It just clears it up a little bit, but um, like again, this is a prototype part. This is the first this is my first pass on on everything on this side. But I mean, it's confidence and just uh, in running the tool pass and stuff and, you know, HSM is super good. Like so far I've had no mistakes with it. So, I'm I'm totally okay with showing my first pass. Um, you never know, but like, uh, yeah, uh, feel pretty good about it. So hopefully um, that helped in clearing things up.